This comes from the book, The Systematic Design of Instruction. And this is actually the model that I learned as part of my master's program. So the Dick and Carey model is a 10 step model. And as you can see, a lot of the pieces of this model are similar to Addy. So for example, there is an analysis phase. There's also design, development, evaluation. You know, it's all in there in the Dick and Carey model, but it has more steps and it is a bit more of a formal process. So I usually tell people, you know, when you're in the real world of instructional design, it's not, you're not necessarily having to follow a particular process exactly as it's written. Now, of course, as part of my coursework, yes, I did have to follow this model. And I want to show you this. So this was something that I had to put together as part of following the Dick and Carey model. I had to identify an instructional goal. I had to put the steps to the instructional goal. And then as part of each performance objective, I had to identify condition, behavior, and criteria. So I would say as part of the master's program, I thought this was really beneficial. It really helped me get deep into the instructional design process. And I believe it helped me become a much better instructional designer. Now, do I use this model in my real world projects? No, I do not. In the real world, I just don't have time to go sit there and think through every single performance objective and criteria and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. It's just, it's too much. It's too formal. So I don't find it to be very practical for my real world instructional design projects, but I am glad I found it. Now, if you're interested in finding out more about Dick and Carrie, I will put links to the book in the description. 